from MetaMask. Um, how you guys doing? Yeah. Right. A3F.com, end of the day. I hope you have some energy uh, because, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to ask it of you. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to share some stuff that I'm really excited about. We've been working on it for a while. We've been thinking about a lot of things. There's a lot of challenges in this ecosystem. You know, I think MetaMask at this point, we're like the thing that you love to hate. It's like, you know, we get the joy of being hated because you use us too much, you know? Like, so so we, we're constantly thinking about like, what's the next step? How do we get, how do we get you guys where you want to go? How do we get your users where they want to go? How do we get out of your damn way? Uh, how do we, how do we unite these, these three things? That's going to be a kind of theme, security, utility, usability. And, and to clarify, because I know some people think that usability and utility are the same. I'm going to say for my purposes, when I say utility, I mean functionally, like a command line coder could do it. But when I say usability, I'm talking about like accessibility, like anybody could do it. So how do we make something that's so secure that anybody could do it, but that they could do kind of anything, right? That's the dream, right? And, and, I, and uh, we want to we make that possible for you. So right now, modern wallets are limited in these, in these three axes. The first one, innovation, right? We don't add new networks fast enough. We don't add your favorite chain, your, your favorite uh, proof of authority, whatever. Um, we don't add new EIP features. There have been better token standards than ERC-20 for like five years, like longer than there's been the period. Um, so like, like uh, we, we, don't, we don't support the latest scaling tech, right? Today, if you've got a new uh, plasma thing or you've got a new uh, you know, layer two thing, you're basically gonna make your own wallet. So it's like the, the average theme will be like, well, you make a new wallet, you make a new wallet. Uh, Contract account, you make a new wallet. Uh, you, you got a new hosting service uh, or you know alternative, but like, make a new wallet. Uh, you got a new hardware wallet, it's not supported by us, we're not merging fast enough, you're probably gonna have to make it into your own wallet. Um, new, you got a new kind of cryptography, you got some uh, some obscure stuff, make a new wallet. Uh, too small, too slow to merge floor requests. Did we not get that feature in in time? Fork us. Make a new wallet. Um, we're we're uh, not secure enough. Okay, we're per a, a JavaScript uh, uh, runtime. Now I hope that you saw uh, Aaron's security talk on Lava Mode. He's been it a couple times. He's talking about how we're working to isolate our dependencies better. Um, and you should you should check that out. Um, you know it's a little bit on Twitter. Um, but but you know that's scary. And and the average average wallet every wallet is a big pile of dependencies. And every and every new feature increases the attack surface. So you're simultaneously furious at your wallets for not having enough features, and you should be terrified the more features your wallet has because each one of them is making you more vulnerable. Okay? And there's account management trade-offs, of course, and we all like have our favorite ones and like to crap on the other ones. Uh, you know, if you make the keys record the, uh, if you make the users record their keys or memorize passwords, they can just lose them. Uh, you might have some new great contract account idea. You know, uh, you know, maybe you can get a, the parity team to, to put their funds in it. Um, and then they, they aren't, they, you know, and then lastly, uh, the, the wallets just aren't usable enough, right? We, you, you got a, sorry, installing a web first and upgrade, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know the wording of that, but yeah, you want to upgrade, you want the procedural progressive security, you want to be able to say, look, if you've got nothing in your wallet, don't back it up, have easy onboarding, all that. Uh, seed phrases, they're passe and annoying, you should have options, right? You should be able to, to onboard your users as gracefully as you can conceive of. And, you know, first, crypto is a pain, but we've got solutions for that. You know, why won't the wallets merge these solutions as fast as they deserve to be? Um, and, and confirmation screens, of course, are obnoxious and tedious, and while they're secure, there's so many of them that they can lead to user fatigue, and even if the users are looking at them, they, you know, they're basically unreadable because you know, you're trying to confirm something in a Turing-complete computer. Like, there, we cannot ant anticipate everything that you've got. You just can't. Um, so how do, we, how do we leverage this big uh, decentralized ecosystem, all of your creativity in this room, and make something that's secure and usable and scalable? And, and so that we can all make it together, and so that we can, we can just solve this. So how do we do it? Well, I'm going to propose that delegation is a really powerful thing in the hands of a user. If you do delegation right, it's, you, you don't grant any authority by default. You have a nice, peaceful, safe place to start. You've got a wallet that doesn't do anything. It doesn't risk your funds. It's conservative, uh, but you're safe. But with human-readable messages, you can uh, have machine-enforceable authorities 
that themselves can be delegated, allowing for large networks of a transitive uh, extensibility of the system. Uh, to facilitate this, uh, you might have seen in the last couple months, we released an EIP, it's in the draft stage, you're welcome to uh, critique it and help improve it. Um, it's our Wallet Permissions API. It's a method by which we uh, propose to suggest users log into websites with a series of machine-enforceable permissions that are human-readable too. And so we're increasingly making that a massive place where it grants no authority by default, keeps users perfectly safe, but gives them the power to grant authority as they see fit. The API looks something like this. You've got an RPC method called request permissions, and the parameters is an object where you request the, the functions you want access to, which each has a configuration option. Those options can include uh, limitations, self-imposed, uh, maybe the allowance that you need, the duration. Uh, there's a, really, the sky's the limit in terms of the, uh, the options that we might extend here. And so this, you know, really just the beginning of a standard. So what wallet permissions are we interested in adding? Why, why are we pursuing this? What, what do we think we can really get? Because we've been doing a lot of interviews with DAP builders. We're, we're not just doing this in a, in a box. Um, so what are the most useful ones? Well, people want, want privacy. Uh, people want, uh, you know, you don't want to ask users to switch the network every time they log in. It would make a lot of sense to make that part of the login flow. Um, a lot of apps use a signature when they first start, but also why not delegate a key and give permission to do signatures on the user's behalf. Um, decryption, you know, the ability to establish an end-to-end -end encrypted channel within a DAP. It would be the beginning of like truly private DAPs. Um, we could have token management become decentralized rather than each wallet having a, a centralized repository where it tells you what tokens are legitimate. You could uh, opt into whatever kind of uh, authority for that you, you perceive. Spending limits, obviously. And, uh, and what else? What do we think is maybe the single most important permission and the thing that I'm like really excited to kind of share with you guys today, the thing we think closes the loop the thing we just renamed five minutes before this thing because we got a new graphic, thanks Christian. Uh, the permission to add permissions, which we call MetaMask Snaps. Uh, it was the, it was the MetaMask plugin system about five minutes ago. It snaps is awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's a little cyborg. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, uh, so what is it? Oh, well, I made two slides of it. Okay. I like it so much. Okay, so what's that concept? Uh, what's the concept? It's a script that you can suggest someone adds to their wallet. It's JavaScript. It's a script that can ask for permissions in the same format that a DAP can. This script gets no other authorities except for what the user explicitly consents to. And this is made possible by the great work at Agoric on their secure ECMAScript script project, which allows us to basically evaluate with very explicit endowments. Now, you know, there's obviously caveats, you know, security is, is an ongoing process, it's never perfect, so we're going to have, like, strong user uh, cautions, or especially early on into the system, but we think that this is the, the kind of path that we believe is very right to pursue. Um, and the plugins can then provide APIs to every website that user visits. Whoa. Yeah, that's Whoa. what goes to the loop. So, uh, so here's, here's the IP2255 of the next generation, that's the uh, wallet permissions. Now, one of the wallet permissions you can request, it's this kind of weird namespace thing, where you say you want wallet plugin and then there's a domain stream. In this case, I made a plasma.eth. Let's say that plasma.eth is a pointer to an IPS, IPFS file, which is a plugin bundle. We'll learn a little bit about that in a minute. Now, when the user sees that, they get a confirmation just like a normal login screen, but one of the permissions would be the permission to uh, connect to this new protocol. The, you know, Uniswap.eth wants to talk to uh, Unipig.eth. You know, it's, and it wants to, uh, and then it would also have its own uh, permissions here. This is, I, I kind of edited this one a little. So it would maybe want to show custom assets, connect to the network, um, you know, and whatever else. I'd have to talk to their protocol devs about exactly what would be their least authority required. So what are a few possibilities we're thinking about for these plugins? We think that new asset types are finally in the hands of the developers. We think new token standards. Um, we're really excited to see subscriptions. Uh, or we want to see uh, yeah, uh, new kinds of collectibles, uh, more secure tokens that actually keep you safer. Um, uh, yeah, credit lines. Uh, so why not put your CDPs in there? Like, why not let your users decide you know, I, one of my favorite Reddit comments ever said, MetaMask, if the internet is an RPG, MetaMask is your inventory. 
So how do we just let this be your inventory? Just put, put what you want in it. Um, and uh, bring your own cryptography. We're adding an experimental API that's been in EIP for uh, about six months now, this get app key proposal. So within your plugin context, you can get a private key that only your domain has access to. And that means we don't, you don't have to ask us to merge your encryption or signing method. You get to decide, you get to define your own cryptography type. If you need a new elliptic curve, if you need a ZK snark, a start, whatever you need, you build a script that defines just that signing type and you get to expose an API to the websites the user visits so that they can now sign using that type. And you'd be able to uh, show uh, custom confirmations as well. This makes layer two suddenly feasible, uh, right in the normal wallet. Um, we've, there's a lot of great teams doing security audits, right, as a service, but where's the channel to currently show that? Why, why not let the wallet uh, just, all, now our job is just to extend the, the API surface that lets them be useful. So we say, okay, our API is the permission to warn you about a dangerous contract. Now you can ask for the permission to warn a user about a dangerous contract, right? That's the API, that's the, the pull request. You're no longer saying, hey, can you lock your users into my service and pull in all my dependencies while you're at it? No, you ask the user if you can just warn them about addresses they're sending to, you don't get to see anything else. Your code is securely isolated. We don't have to merge pull requests anymore. And, and people get to be safer because they're permissionlessly getting warned by a whole network of auditors. Um, potentially you could charge for these plugins too. Um, we are excited to support new protocols. Uh, we actually have an examples folder we're going to show you in a little bit. Uh, there's an IPFS example. It was like 10 lines. Um, there, you'll be able to make custom confirmations. The current beta build that we have just uses alert and confirm, but we're going to let them be pretty eventually too. Um, and new account types. Um, there's really an endless number of account types. Have we figured out the last one, the account types to rule them all? Or maybe maybe even account types deserve to be extensible. One of the coolest things about the Gnosis Safe is it supports add-ons itself. So why not make a plugin that accepts plugins, perhaps? And uh, of course, you're getting fewer confirmations because when you delegate some capabilities to a script, you can potentially delegate uh, a, things that you would normally be repetitively confirming, and so there's just opportunities for reducing user confirmation. Okay, so then what do you want to see? Is there anything that I didn't say there? Is there are there use cases that, is anybody like, my thing, like finally, like I don't have to PR a wallet or build a wallet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Am I covering them? Yeah, you have them? A little, no, okay, okay, <laughs> that's fine. You don't have to share. Free money. Um, what's that? Free money. Free money? I wasn't. I'm just kidding. Uh, you can make a free money plugin. I, we have a sample plugin that just, it's just a uh, in memory app. Just way. Yeah, yeah, we'll show you how to make free money in just a minute. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, here's a screenshot. We have, we have a very simple MVP right now. Here's an example of a contract audit plugin. We, we whipped this up in an hour this morning. Um, so, so it's incredibly easy for us to add new features that then are just surface area for the ecosystem to extend on. Um, this also allows for kind of new uh, onboarding. Those, uh, those confirmations that we use to onboard people, they can also be used as onboarding links. So we kind of have an idea that in the future, if you want to onboard somebody to crypto, there could be a single link. And it could incorporate both the, the redirection to get onboarded with the wallet, but also the configuration of the dependencies that your application needs in that wallet. Right? So if, you're, if your point of sale requires a certain state channel, why not just give a person a single link? They suddenly have a wallet. The only thing in their wallet is your, like, uh, your store's you know, redemption uh, frequent shopper points. But that's the only thing they care about. So what are they getting into crypto for? But your product, right? This is, this is about what you're building. We're, we were always just been an on-ramp for you. Um, and wait, what was that last one? Uh, we can make an extension list? Oh yeah, you could, you could, we can build this. This is all JavaScript. We could make this a single page thing. We could do a burner equivalent of this and gradually progress it. And I know there's, there's some calling for that. It's kind of a bandwidth thing for us. We're, we're kind of in the, you know, obviously. So the way we've approached this is iterative. We added this permission system. We're pretty happy about it, but it's a mere RPC. RPCs are pretty coarse, but they will get us started. Uh, the plugin system uses the RPC permission system to uh, allow scripts, uh, allow users to request permission and then pass those permissions on to scripts. And from here, we basically want to know what API surface unleashes your projects the most. I gave a lot of examples. 
And uh, you know, some of those are accounted for, some of those APIs we're making. We're gonna show you some docs in a second. Uh, do you have one that just came to mind? Yeah, I'm curious about like hooks. So how is it that we actually like put our like a plugin, do we actually get able to modify the user experience beyond just like the confirmation screen or so so initially just uh, yeah, uh, we should probably do a QA uh, a little bit later, but uh, initially we're looking at very discrete, deliberate changes to the user experience where we're still controlling it, but we're like permitting parts of it. Right. Longer term, as there are more secure options available for extending the user interface in, in a safe way, we're, we're open to exploring that. But, but I, I think a, a very gradual, iterative approach is, is the way, one we're looking at. It's already a pretty big uh, lead. Can the plugin also change the UI and branding, or is it like uh, not yet? Uh, I mean, not yet, but that's like the kind of conversation we can now have. We can say, would you would you be interested in the, the API to rebrand and, and take your commission? And be like, Why you're like, well, uh, we we are going to need dinner at some point, but um, but we can talk. You know, now now we've elevated the EIP conversation from like, uh, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, is your specific protocol kind of part of the wallet? and all wallets now have to integrate it to you can now define your component and uh, and you can just define the surface area we need to expose to enable it. And that can be the politic. Just one quick question around like, so in theory, is this be like purchasable plugins? So there's like a little yes. store? Or yeah, I think I, we, we've been considering that. You know, we, we are pre-revenue less like pretty much every wallet is. It's possible that a curation of a store or something like that could be uh, an option. That, uh, but this is this is the beginning of a developer beta. It's we're not like uh, selling or walling this at all yet. Um, so yeah, uh, let's let's uh, we've got we got a lot to cover, and I do want to help you guys uh, build a little pretty good on time. But I'm hoping that we have a majority of the workshop for you guys to actually try it out and uh, a, a period for questions. So I'd like to thank some of the early teams that we gave uh, we got some feedback from. We did some user research. Some teams even pulled out some. Uh, some uh, early prototypes. Uh, so uh, now uh, to, to talk a little bit about what a Hello World plugin looks like, I'd like to welcome to the stage Mr. Eric Mars. Now, so for my first trick, uh, let's make this uh, area up here just a little bit more intimate. We have two seats over here, two seats over here, one seat over here. Please move forward. Come, come, towards the stage, as it, as it were, is. Also, if you happen to have internet and you scan that QR code, it will take you to the page where you can download things to actually start building something. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. That'll take you to the wiki. Uh, it's got everything. You could you could basically scan that and leave it if you really want. Uh, right. Yes, because we're dropping the videos and all sorts of stuff. Yes. But anyway, uh, I'm gonna have to drop this mic because I need uh, both of my hands. So when everyone has finished moving up, if they want to, good. I'm going to say that that's good enough. Uh, there's like two seats up here. There's a seat here. There's like two more seats here. If uh, if you want to come sit. Is that sort of visible to people, this level of Zoom? Looking good? No. No? More. More? Better? That's better. Can you go to the QR code page? QR code page again? Sure. <laughs> Did you get the QR code? Yeah. Also, do we have the local? Actually, no. I'm going to do it Well, yeah. Well, everything will be uploaded and available uh, later for when you guys have. Um, uh, yeah. After his presentation, we'll even post it locally for anybody who can't get on the internet. But, Okay, so, uh, so there are, first of all, uh, we, have re we just now made public the two relevant repositories for this, 
And I'm going to talk about like what a plugin is under the hood for the devs in the room so you can take this away and start building with it. Uh, we have a fork of the MetaMask extension that supports the uh, plugin system. It is a MetaMask plugin beta. We also have a uh, command line utility called MM plugin uh, that you can use to build, configure, uh, watch uh, for file changes, uh, serve them locally uh, for testing, for local development. And uh, uh, we have on the MetaMask plugin beta repository a wiki that should contain everything you need to uh, get started. And um, so, what is uh, so as far as the MetaMask uh, extension is concerned, uh, a plugin is two things. One is a package.json file following the conventions established by npm, which should be super familiar to most of you. Uh, and uh, second is a uh, source file bundle. And um, we made the tool uh, MM plugin, as I said, to uh, help you get started with that. And on the wiki, uh, we also talk about the uh, plugin API, which is the API that the extension exposes to the plugin context. As Dan mentioned, uh, it, we take the uh, plugin bundle, we load it into the extension, and execute it inside of a uh, CES container. Uh, that container uh, doesn't get any, um, uh, any sort of globals by default, so we inject some stuff into it by default uh, at the moment, such as uh, the fetch API, uh, XML, uh, HTTP request, uh, and so on. Uh, we are also uh, injecting this global uh, wallet object, which represents, uh, which basically contains most of the methods that MetaMask uses internally uh, to construct our user interface. Uh, and we, yeah, it's basically, and, and also a bunch of provider methods. So you can think of it as a superset of the Ethereum provider. Um, and we're, uh, we're still changing stuff and we're thinking about like, we're definitely going to add methods. We may also remove some methods, it's in flux, but right at the moment, uh, a plugin can request basically any method that we use internally, except for some super critical key management stuff that nobody should ever be able to request. Uh, a plugin can request that as a permission to use uh, for whatever it is uh, it's trying to do. Uh, and uh, for my next trick, I'm going to show you how to get started with developing uh, MetaMask plugins, or uh, Snaps, if that rebrand sticks. Uh, <laughs> and so, for me the tool, MM plugin, so all I've done here is I've created a folder for my project, I'm calling it Hello World, uh, and we're just going to call MM plugin in it. And uh, so the first thing it's going to do is it's just going to walk you through the usual npm init uh, workflow to create the basic package.json. Uh, so we're just going to click through this. Uh, hello, plugins. Uh, entry point, no test, no repo. Uh, all of us off. Yes. Great. And so we're going to go ahead and accept that. Uh, and now, it, once it's gone through the regular NPM in it, then we add some more stuff uh, that MetaMask uses to identify that it is a plugin and how to load it and so on. Uh, and so we, we're just going to use the defaults here, but I'll just show you what it looks like. So uh, we define a local server port, like where we'll host it locally uh, for development, uh, an output directory, uh, and the initial permissions uh, that the uh, plugin is going to request upon being installed. Uh, and we're just going to run it except that. And then it did a bunch of stuff. But all it really did was it just wrote the files that we'll need uh, to work with. And inside this disk folder, uh, we have the bundle itself. So it just wrote these files uh, with like uh, the most sort of minimal Hello World plugin uh, you might want as a framework for you to get started with, uh, and also uh, built it. And uh, we can start by taking a look at the package.json. And uh, you'll see that it looks uh, just like a regular package.json, except for this uh, Web3 wallet property here. It contains uh, a bundle property which tells MetaMask where the bundle lives. Uh, so you have the local, uh, which just says like where is the bundle relative to the project root, and then the URL, uh, which is where it will be hosted. Uh, and uh, if this were if for production, that would be like the URL of where you are hosting the plugin bundle online. 
Um, and uh, we hope to support ENS and, uh, and other things after that, but for now it's just uh, HTTP. Uh, HTTP. Um, and the initial permissions, that's just, as I said, those permissions that it will request when it's installed. Uh, and so, now I'm going to call watch so we can rebuild on change and uh, serve so we can. Okay. Here. And refresh. Ah, it's the front end of our uh, of our plugin. And inside the and inside the uh, project directory, it's just it built an index.html file just so you have a user interface as uh, so you can work with and get a feel for like what it will actually look like in practice. And so in my extension here, I have the uh, plugin version of MetaMask loaded. I'm just going to make sure that my state is clear. Uh, usually you should not have to do that, but we expose we add those buttons just uh, in case for development purposes. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit connect. And that'll uh, initiate uh, this request. And this is this request here is the DAP saying, hey, MetaMask, can I talk to this plugin and also install it if it's not already installed? So this is the DAP asking permission to use the plugin. And we're going to go ahead and say yes. And now this request, uh, so we're still working on exactly what this is going to uh, look like. Uh, but this request is the plugin, which we just now installed saying, hey, uh, can I, the plugin, get the permission to show alerts on the user's page? And as Dan mentioned, currently we're just using the browser defaults for alert and confirm, but we're going to, uh, eventually uh, we want to allow uh, plugin developers to build their own sort of custom confirmation screens. So say that you have some interaction, you build a plugin for your DAP, the DAP calls the method in the plugin, and you want to display a custom confirmation screen uh, that's uh, initiated from inside MetaMask, uh, you'll be able to do that eventually. That's the plan. Uh, but we'll submit that. And this plugin, being very simple, it has a hello method. So we're going to send the hello method. And that super tiny text says, uh, hello, localhost. Uh, and, uh, and the big deal. It didn't come from the page. It came from MetaMask. It came from MetaMask, yes. It came from it. So it, because it uses the uh, alert method that we've defined inside MetaMask, which is the permission it asked for when it was installed, uh, and that's where the notification uh, came from. And so the big deal. Uh, so the big deal here is that now we've effectively extended the uh, MetaMask in-page provider with an RPC method uh, that belongs to a plugin that's running trustlessly inside Mes MetaMask in a Cess container. And so if we look under the hood here of what's going on, we can start with uh, uh, start with the index.html. Uh, so this was the web page we were just looking for, our front end as it were. Uh, it has some buttons and stuff. And the first thing I want to bring your attention to is uh, this connect function here. So this follows the EIP 2255 uh, API that Dan uh, showed earlier in his slides. And so uh, this is again the uh, DAP asking for permissions to talk to the plugin. And so the method is wallet request permissions. And uh, the uh, permission is this plugin origin string uh, that we construct uh, here. And uh, so basically, and basically what that is, it just uh, takes this uh, uh, permission and namespace prefix and, and then the uh, plugin's uh, origin string and just tacks it on and just uh, joins them together. And that becomes a permission identifying uh, the plugin. And then we have uh, the send handler here, which again just uses the in page provider to send a message to MetaMask. But now, the method, uh, we use plugin origin as the method, which tells MetaMask, hey, uh, I want to uh, talk to the plugin that's identified by this string. And inside here, we send an object uh, that can take whatever shape the plugin developer wants it to take. Uh, but we just use like the same RPC uh, request object format. And there's one, uh, and the method is hello. Uh, and if we look at the plugin source code, It is 10 lines, 
and we see that it defines a single method called hello, and it sends back hello whatever uh, origin it, it came from. And the origin here, that's the origin of the dApp that sent the request. Uh, and so to just go over what we have going on here, uh, we have this, as I mentioned, the global uh, wallet, op wallet object, which is the API that MetaMask exposes to the plugin. Uh, and this register RPC message handler is what, um, uh, what you use as a plugin developer to extend the MetaMask, in to effectively extend the MetaMask in-page uh, provider API. And so that takes an origin string, which is the string of the uh, requesting context, so like the dApps origin, and then a uh, request object that can be whatever shape you want. It doesn't even have to be an object, it could be a string, it could be whatever, but uh, in a, uh, by convention in RPC we use object. And uh, it just says uh, uh, hello origin string is what it returns, and if it doesn't get a method uh, that it recognizes it, recognizes it throws an error. And so we can very simply alter this, and since we're at the com 5 we'll say that, and we'll write, and we built, and we'll go back to the in page. And now because I rebuilt the plugin, we're, gonna, we're just gonna do the connect flow again, and reinstall it. And now if we send hello, we get uh, konnichiwa, local host, uh, instead. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, if you like that, uh, just wait and see uh, what these examples can do. Uh, and before I do that, was there a question in the back? What happens when the remote bundle gets changed if you update your app? Uh, so we will have uh, some well-defined way of handling updates to plugins. Uh, we have yet to uh, define what that's going to look like uh, at the moment since it's, uh, we haven't defined it yet since nothing is in production yet. Uh, but there will be a way for plugins to essentially uh, issue updates to themselves, like let users know that they're updated, and we'll also provide a way for, uh, my, say that you chained Say that because the plugins can persist their state also, and will also expose a way for updating without like erasing its state, its local state inside the user's extension. Yeah, uh, but for now there is uh, every time you update, you just reinstall it and it wipes everything for the time. Yes. Better not uh, mobile too, or just desktop. So how this is going to work with mobile is we absolutely want it to work with mobile, uh, and uh, but how we're going to accomplish that. Uh, the beta is on desktop. What? The beta is on desktop. The beta is on desktop. Yeah. <laughs> this one's on, on desktop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no pressure. I'm just <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but you're uh, you're right to ask. We want to go there. Ask ask Bruno. I'm gonna use touchpad. Electron. Electron. Angular. With a manual. Uh, you mean can can the plugin itself be an Angular app? Yes. Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, because the thing the thing is like <laughs> yeah yeah you, you you try and tell us what errors you get when you try to build it. <laughs> because we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. Because like what the build script does, it will pull in all of your uh, dependencies. Um, when you build, and we run them through Browserify currently. Uh, and so there are sometimes issues that arise when your dependencies are being too clever with JavaScript globals, uh, or when they do dumb stuff that they shouldn't, then it throws errors. Yeah. Uh, oh, so not a, oh, you're asking about the desktop. Yeah. yeah, the front end. I'm um, asking about this application, not oh. the page. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's not a desktop application. It's a browser extension. Yes, I'm, yeah. This is my question. Can I use this plugin in a desktop application? Uh, eventually, something. We we would have to go to a native layer. It, it's beyond this. It's not the feature we're introducing here. Yeah. Um, but in any event, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, and here for the examples, there are a couple. Uh, we have a number of them. We're constantly adding to them. Uh, hello plugin here is the one you get when you run uh, MM plugin init. Uh, and the first one I want to show you is uh, this uh, recipient address auditor, uh, which is just uh, basically we've added uh, an, 
internal API method that allows uh, you, the plugin developer, to uh, tell MetaMask what is an unsafe or a safe address. And so if we look at the package.json here, the initial permissions requested is a new unapproved transaction. So that's an event uh, inside of MetaMask that's fired when uh, a new uh, transaction is created that the user has to approve. And then this new address audit is a way for the plugin to uh, modify uh, that screen. And so here we've created um, this mock audit API, which uh, it looks at whether the uh, final uh, hex character of the uh, recipient address is a letter, and then from there determines if it's safe or unsafe. Um, and here, what and so th what this plugin looks like is we say we create a listener for new unapproved transaction, uh, and whenever a transaction uh, appears. Uh, it, uh, we call this add address audit method, and it will indicate in the send screen if this particular plugin thinks that the recipient is safe or unsafe, or, uh, or perhaps uh, unknown if the, uh, the plugin doesn't have an opinion. Uh, so now we, uh, have, now we can add all sorts of uh, smart, uh, like contract security, recipient security uh, plugins uh, with this API. Uh, the second example, is uh, custom tokens or free money? This is the one. <laughs> yeah, whoever has that question, uh, pay attention. Um, so here, our uh, our only permission is this wallet manage assets uh, method, and uh, if we look at this source, uh, we define our own free money token here that we call asset, and uh, this one lives in memory, so uh, it won't be very, uh, it won't make you rich for very long. Uh, but we can imagine that you know it's some ERC interface that's unknown to MetaMask, uh, but that you, the plugin developer, know about. And so uh, we define this object uh, that tells MetaMask some basic stuff, like presumably if it's an asset, it has some sort of symbol, a balance, uh, an identifier, maybe an image, uh, maybe some decimals. Uh, and then uh, we have a, a, an RPC message handler, so from the end page, uh, the user can uh, get the balance of this custom token, uh, it can mint more of them, uh, and it can burn them. And then here in this update UI uh, function, it basically keeps track of like what is the status of my, uh, of this asset. So imagine like if it's actually on chain, you could query uh, the chain somehow, you could actually send a request to MetaMask to like read, uh, read from the blockchain to see what your asset is doing and then you can update it uh, using this wallet.send method. So here, is, this is actually the plugin sending an RPC request from inside MetaMask to MetaMask uh, in order th and that it should update the, uh, uh, the assets. Uh, that's the, and, so, and that asset will be displayed like in the token list in, or in the asset list inside of MetaMask. And finally, uh, one cool thing you can also do is add new forms of cryptography to MetaMask, which previously was hard, but now is very easy, as you will see. Uh, this plugin has confirm as a permission just for uh, like uh, the UX purposes uh, for the demo. Uh, but if we look at the index here, uh, we import this uh, BLS 12.381 library, uh, and uh, we use the uh, wallet.get app key uh, that Dan mentioned. Uh, so app keys is something we've been researching internally for some time, and uh, we essentially we get a um, a private key. We treat the app key as the private key. We call the uh, get public key method of this uh, BLS library, and now suddenly we can sign arbitrary data and do all the usual key pair stuff with this app key and this new um, uh, public key that we. Uh, and if you think that's cool, uh, we have Tom from Starkware here, who uh, is actually doing something uh, useful with this. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> yes, we, we all hope. Um, Hi, everybody. Yeah, give me a hand to yeah. Hello, everybody. Do you hear me? I mean, I don't have a voice. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. So, just a quick intro. My name is Tom Brand. I'm a protocol research and a product manager at Starkware. Um, we are a company based in Israel, and we're uh, doing the uh, development and productization of uh, zero knowledge proofs, basically Starks. Our first product, which Oren, which is also here, announced uh, today on the main stage, is a there are two scalability solutions uh, to enable self-custody trading, which hopefully will be live on mainnet in January, to, together with our partners uh, Diversify, which was Phoenix a month ago. And uh, what we're going to show you today is basically a, a nice... Um, okay, we'll get it in a second. Basically, it's a very nice variation on BLS uh, signer, which allows us to... Um, give the users the ability to sign on our specific uh, elliptic curve parameters. I will give a big intro to it. So, um, in zero knowledge proofs, in order to have efficient uh, uh, proving, you have to uh, tweak a bit the curve parameters of a normal ECPSA. If you sign over the SEC P256, which is the normal curve in Ethereum or Bitcoin, it becomes very inefficient. So you have to uh, pick specific parameters in order to have it efficient off-chain. But then it gets very hard to use uh, MetaMask, for example. So what this plugin system or SNAP system let us do is very easily create a plugin, which I'll show in a second, that allow the users to use MetaMask with a derived private key to sign over our specific elliptic curve. Right? So I'll try to show. Please tell me if you don't hear me or don't see anything. So I'll just start first with the plugin and then I can go a little bit over the code. So do you see it? Is the text is the text big enough? Yeah. Okay, make okay. it bigger. Okay, sure. So slightly, slightly bigger. Okay. <laughs> How is that? <laughs> So good. Okay, great. So, just to remind what we're doing, so we're building. Uh, okay, maybe I'll show. You. So, we are here in the in the plugin directory. We have everything we need. We just uh, build it, and then we can start it. Basically, oh. <coughs> it's yeah. Okay, great. Now we have it here. So this is like some kind of uh, nice UI, but basically uh, this will be in the, in the client of the, of the exchange, right? It won't look like that, it will be just a simple client of the exchange which will enable us to uh, connect to MetaMask and sign on orders which we want to submit to the, to the exchange. So same way that we did the, before, we're connecting to the Installing the plugin and then allowing it to uh, conditions that we're asking for. I hope not our plugin to make it slow, but maybe it is. And once we have it, we can just get the public key. And, and, and just to, to make sure you understand, this is uh, the public key based on our elliptic curve, which was derived from the seed metamask with the exact same method of uh, get up key. Right? And after we get the public key, we can sign any message we want, specifically an order message which says, I want to buy, uh, maybe we'll, we don't sell it in big in that one, right? So let's <laughs> sell <laughs> So I, I want to sell die and, uh, and receive this, and this is the, the account that they have off chain, I won't get into it. And this is like the order ID, and then we get a prompt. You can't see it, but it says, do you really want to sign this message and the parameters that we have? And when, once I, uh, I basically received this, the, the seed, okay? Um, so I can go over some of the code, if you want. Yeah, it's, it's it's a, a, yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where's this BLS key back then? Or is it not BLS? No, it's not BLS, it's a simple no. ECDSA. Sorry, where, where's the key back then? As a plugin developer, are you responsible for key? No, the key is inside the MetaMask, and I also call 
What? Yes. Okay. <laughs> good, good question. Okay, great. So, um, first of all, we can look at the um, just on what we have here. So, again, we have here only two uh, two calls. Uh, one is get account, which just give you the public key, and one is the sign message. And the nice thing about the way MetaMask did it, and they don't pay me, is that uh, <laughs> oh, really. I can show you maybe. Uh, so we previously had uh, uh, our own module for signing over our elliptic curve using only the elliptic module that MetaMask is using. And once we had it, we only needed to uh, import it here, and and it all gets bundled together in the bundled JavaScript. And then whatever you have. Uh, already you can just incorporate it into the plugin and you don't need to do anything new. Right? So once we have our signature, all we need to do is get the public key, I will show it in a second, and, and you just get it from our own uh, crypto library. And, and same with the signing. Once you uh, want to sign the message, you just, uh, never mind, but um, you, you just get the, or the message you want to sign, and you call our own uh, module. Okay, great. Something else that you want to see? Uh, that's, that's probably pretty good. Okay, maybe just. Okay, no. I, I don't know. Who, is there something else? Is, like any, is there any questions? Yeah. So you're like obfuscating like start start groups then through the plugin, so that like adapts so doesn't actually have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Is that the idea? So this has nothing to do with the proofs. It's just that we want to allow the user to sign with a slightly different uh, okay. signature scheme, okay, okay. right? So this is our way to do whatever we want with the elliptic curve, like yeah. changing the curve that we sign over, okay. but in a very simple way. So it took us literally a couple of hours to do it. Yeah. Maybe just the design of the HTML was pretty hard, but other than that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, did you have to change? Um, I can't hear you. Said, so uh, you said you had a lot of this JavaScript already written. Um, did yeah. you have to change anything to make it no. run under test? Nothing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if you can answer this one, but what what models are you using? Uh, what modules are you doing things with Browserfly, like the Net Native Library FS? I can't hear something you. Something change? Oh, oh no. Uh, so you're asking about whether we expose any native Node modules? Right. Um, exactly. There, there are no. He's. Uh, I don't think using any Node native modules, right? Uh, because we don't inject any no. ambient authority from the Node environment. Uh, Browserfly, I guess, does provide some, but it shows the line work here because they're only getting run at, uh, at, at they're, they're only getting loaded at runtime. So there's no there's no FS to even access uh, at okay. the time. Well, like crypto is an example. Required crypto. Oh, right. So, so Browserfy inserts a crypto library, and so it would, I guess, get a bundle in here. Uh, yeah, some if if, if we use the crypto library, it will provide. Right, right. So the way Browserfy works, if you require crypto, it's going to provide it. And and yeah, and at the moment, I don't know if Eric made it perfectly clear. Um, our, our goal is to provide zero ambient authority. For right now, for convenience, we do have some APIs that we're just kind of leaving in for the sake of convenience because uh, mocking the entire fetch library behind our permission system is a little bit tedious because it's a very complicated API. But um, but yeah, that's that's where we're headed towards. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Yeah, a question? Yeah, so this, this is awesome. I have a lot of plugin ideas that I would want to build like today, and I'm yeah. sure there are many companies that have a lot of plugins they would post bounties for. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, right now with the Remix plugin system, there's no forum or community to, to coordinate the creation of the plugins. It's uh -huh. all on Gitter and someone posts it, and that's, that's fine, but uh, I would like to see the best and the most needed plugins put forward and worked on immediately. And so if the answer is like, no, that that community doesn't exist, I'm willing to put forward the legwork to create it uh, with your input because I, I want to see like some real plugins. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, just to recant that for anyone who didn't hear it because I thought it was really wonderful. Uh, it was a call to community action and organizing. Yeah, for the people on the video, uh, 
Yeah, that, that let's let's get a forum or let's get a community going where we list the plugins that would be most beneficial. Um, right now, we've got we've got the uh, kind of plugin repository. We also have started a uh, key base uh, team channel called MetaMask Plugin. I think with an S. Uh, which one of them's a Fisher? Probably could, by the time I said the wrong one. So we'll figure that out. We'll get it uh, on the. I think it's on the wiki if you're on the on the repo. But but yeah, I, I agree. We should we should get those. We should get bounties on them because things like a, like a Stark signer. That's a thing where one person makes it, every DAP can use it, right? And and that, those accounts are portable between DAPs. Um, I have a question about the, the free money example that Eric showed, where you were listing that sort of criteria that typically users now do manually to add a token. Right. So does that actually, could that like replace that process so that theoretically a developer, let's say you're doing some meta transactions and you want to use a token and then you can kind of add that token, is that, yeah. I understand that correctly? Yeah, yeah, the question is uh, whether the, the API we're exposing for managing assets could replace the manual process of users adding tokens. That's totally the point. Um, me and Esteban here actually had it both EIP 747 hasn't gotten real popular with y'all, but uh, it, it, it already does that to suggest via API uh, to add a token. So you can do that today. But this is the way that a whole plugin could do it. So if you've got like not just one plugin, but you've got, you're, you're a directory or something, uh, and, and also most of those APIs like that, that's, that is a rough, that is like a proposal, right? Basically all these APIs are EIP draft draft stage like we're trying to get to you as early as we can so we can get feedback and not feel hurt if we change the quality of you guys. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. As a plugin, can you get access to, like, the mnemonic? Uh, no. As a plugin, you do not get access to the mnemonic. What you get is you get uh, the, the app key that, uh, proposal that we're using. I, uh, the idea came to, it was from a Remco from Zero X Protocol. It was a very simple and elegant solution, I thought. We take the uh, your current account um, for for each account, we take its private key, combine it with the, the plugin's domain, so it's the most secure identifier we have of it, hopefully an ENS name or something, and we hash those together to generate a new private key that is exposed to that plugin. So your plugin has a private key that is deterministically generated from the user's seed in a way that only your plugin has access to. And that's why, uh, you know, the get app keys proposal had some kind of a critique when we first posted it because, oh, these keys aren't portable between sites. But via plugins, they absolutely are. So now a single plugin can represent a single signing strategy, and every account can have any number of key types associated with it. Uh, yeah? Well, there's one thing I want to follow with that question. Yeah. So if the plugin ID is, is going to be based, deterministic based off of the script plugin, then you won't be able to carry the API that, that, that key to upgrades. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, He's thinking that it's based off of the source. Okay. Uh, so it's not so it's uh, so the key is not based on the source oh, code right. of the plugin. Okay. Uh, right now, it's based on the origin string, which still uh, introduces a problem if you uh, host it somewhere else. Uh, which is why we would like uh, to support EMS, and then hopefully it can just be hosted at the same place, and you can just point it elsewhere. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. And that lets us like these plugins could be updated by DAO or something. Like you could imagine a very, very secure, resilient process for updating them, which is something we're envious of because the uh, the Chrome extension store doesn't give us that, and they give us very coarse permissions that we have to request. Uh, uh, yeah, there, you'll never have to ask for the ability to rewrite everything on the site to expose an API using this system. Uh, the other question I have yeah. is: Are you going to be converting the ERC twenty support into a plugin, given that now tokens should all become plugins? You know, you know there's there's a, definitely a, a thing that we toy with now that we've been playing with this is bit by bit we can move our architecture into the plugin system and, and we get this great kind of code isolation for free. Yeah. Um, it's funny because it's kind of a great counterpart to the work that Aaron is doing with Lava Mode, where we are procedurally sandboxing all of our dependencies using the exact same uh, Agoric Secure ECMAScript uh, system. So, um, so yeah, I think I think it's it's a really cool opportunity for modularity and really tight security between our own infrastructure. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of it, internal it, housekeeping. It, with that, yeah, for example, yeah, yeah, and and, and for example, yeah, uh, not just tokens, but like uh, almost everything that we do. <laughs> I, I don't want to go too deep off the cliff. Yeah, Peter. So the user prompt was just an alert, like an old school browser alert. Yeah, yeah. Is there going to be any? any yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we've said it a few times, but just to reiterate, Pedro's concerned that we're just exposing the browser alert. 
No, that's just the MVP. Um, we actually have an opportunity to let you render whatever rich notification you want, which is, seems like a pretty big opportunity. There have been a number of different proposals from different wallets how to let dApps propose uh, custom uh, notifications. And a lot of the, basically the problem with all of them to me, the thing that has given me apprehension about every proposal that I've seen, is they all end up pointing at some central repository. And they're just like, they're like, they're like decentralized magic. Like, yeah, once it's a TCR, it's not a problem or something. Uh, here we're saying, you no, know, very explicitly, there is, there's gonna be a mechanism for each plugin to, to moderate and manage its own one. You can have a different governance protocol for each uh, confirmation screen. You can have a different confirmation screen for each contract. Uh, those are, that's the kind of conversation that we can have now though, that we can say, what is the amount of granularity we want over these confirmation screens? Uh, what would most empower DAPs to feel coherent to users? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to just have a wrap this up because uh, the truth is, you know, this is a, this is a uh, we're coming up on one of our two hours, and our our dream was that we could actually get some of you like because I, I bet a number of you here have like a library like Starcore had where it's like this thing you might be able to just drop in. Um, so I'm going to just give you a few caveats like current issues that you might want to know when you're using the system. Um, oh yeah. Uh, so so you're gonna you're, you might learn through the build system. You might get some errors that are strange or new to you. Um, these are usually things about your dependencies tried to mutate the prototype of string or tried to change function or tried to mess with what uh, promised it. And and that's that's what Eric meant when he said too clever. Okay. If your dependencies are doing things that are downright dangerous and they're basically resemble the same thing an attacker would do, it's gonna fail. It's gonna fail in the build system. It's gonna fail when you try to load it into MetaMask. So this is an opportunity for you to get off of insecure dependencies and to push security updates to your dependencies, which is a cool side benefit of this. If you use our plugin system, you're making your dependencies more secure. Sweet, right? Um, we're, uh, we're also going to add big, fat security warnings, OK? None of these things are perfect. We're not claiming that CES is perfect. It's not a panacea, but we should aspire for it to be. And this is the kind of thing that the community should rally around, helping fund. This is, this is something worthy of a, a Moloch DAO. Uh, the community should get around formally verifying tools like CES that let us all benefit from greatly increased security. OK, this is a huge, huge community resource. Um, uh, we're going to give lots of UX love. This has been very rough. Uh, you know, sorry for the alerts and all that. We really just wanted to get it into your hands as soon as possible. Um, we're also going to try to incorporate much better signals about what's a reputable plugin. We know that one of the reasons our users don't get fished very often is that the Chrome store has reviews and user accounts. Um, we would like to extend the similar opportunities, but perhaps in a more decentralized manner. Um, obviously, we're going to put up uh, bug bounties and we're going to have uh, security audits and all sorts of stuff. You can't audit this enough. This is about the scariest thing you could do, but if we do it right, it just could be the coolest. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, we're going to improve the performance. Um, you've probably noticed, uh, you know, the pop-ups are already slow on MetaMask. This did make it a little bit worse. We're going to be tooling and we're going to be improving and tweaking and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then, of course, we're going to allow uh, plugins to specify settings pages because uh, we don't know what you need, but you do. Um, you can basically already hack it together because your plugin gets the, or the requesting origin string. So you can basically just say my domain is my setting string and give it special methods, which is kind of a cool side benefit of getting to define your own permissions. And uh, yeah, adding a plugin update mechanism will, will be coming. That's way something definitely required before production. And uh, before production, we're going to be locking down all global ambient authority. Plugins will get nothing that they didn't explicitly ask for from users. Because um, we're trying to make the most safe environment we can. Uh, and then we got to just refine those APIs. Beyond all that, it's just about getting you guys to communicate, rally around the plugins that are most effective, and the APIs that enable those most effective plugins. And those can be the things that we really kind of focus on as like a community and standards uh, type of you know uh, group of people. Um, so that that is all we have to say to to get you kind of started. We hope this was a big push on the sled. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> If, if your internet is bad, you can connect to the Wi-Fi MetaMask right now and point your browser at metamask.local and you've got all the docs and a build of MetaMask that supports plugins and the MM plugin build tool. We were like really paranoid about how this would happen. Um, and uh, yeah, other than that, just scan this. If you do have the internet, you'll go to the GitHub wiki. The repo's open now. It's got a video that's very similar to the presentation we just made so that people outside of this room can be learning this right now. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's spend the rest of the time. Yeah, that was exactly one hour. 
maybe maybe like five minutes or something, like maybe just like a few questions and then you want us to just start building. And we've actually got a whole team full of uh, MetaMask members here uh, ready to answer your questions. Actually, Oma, or you said, UX researcher, would maybe like to say a couple words before you get started? Yeah. All right. So as someone back there said that they have a lot of ideas on what plugins they want to build, we want to listen from you on what plugins you would want to build and why. Uh, so we are, uh, all the team is here, please come and talk to us. Um, we want to hear you so that we can find out what the most impactful use cases are and what we should be building first to test the system out. Um, if you don't have an idea of what plugin you might want to build, but you can think of what is missing in the wallet, uh, for users. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we also want to hear from you on what is, uh, what in your opinion is missing from uh, from the wallet, so that we can think of a potential solution for that, and uh, as a plugin or not. Um, and the third thing is, if you can think of challenges or limitations that you might see uh, or foresee coming with the system, we also want to hear your thoughts and your ideas and your questions. So, a lot, but uh, we are here uh, for the next hour and we'll be there for the rest of the conference as well. Please come talk to us when you're here. Yeah? What, what's that? Uh, subscriptions. Subscriptions? Uh, uh, subscriptions like to events or subscriptions like, uh, uh, like automated ground Automated payments. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you should group up with this plugin team over here. We're going to have a little hackathon for the next hour. Okay. Groundhog does subscriptions. I bet you they can drop one in. The custom asset thing, you can just hack around. Right now, when you click on it, you get to just open a page. So hopefully that's enough to just kind of like show a group of concept. Yeah? Um, cool. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe you want to shout out plugins that you're hoping to maybe uh, whip up in this next hour and we can help connect people? That seems like a good use of my time. Yeah? Uh, any, any other plugins that people maybe think they might want to try to build in the next hour? No? Okay. Everybody doesn't you know, not have to build. You can do, you can do some questions too. Libra. Uh, <laughs> <Libra? laughs> <laughs> Like a generated interface, so you can call any function on the contract. Like a, a universal interface that lets you connect to a contract. Um, so, like, I guess the question would be, like, where do we put it? Like, so you want a place where you can customize within the MetaMask interface. Um, so what you can do right now is you could hack our custom asset thing. To, the custom asset thing is very flexible. You basically just to show something in our token list. You get an icon and a name, and, and it links to something. So you could just show a contract there and you can link to a universal uh, interface. Yeah. So I think there's, there's an opportunity to build that with what we have, but if there are other APIs that we hope that, I guess like, uh, 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 I think it's, it's pretty good work, so uh, I think I'll just let it roll. Uh, we're going to be the other now, and this is going to be a small one. Does that sound right? Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.